45 years old, which is not old by any means. No. Know, and your fifth overall in the national championship of a highly competitive series. Yeah, yeah. I think that's epic. And you're only getting faster. Guys, finally, we're here, the Ask a Pro series. It's gonna be an addition to the channel. We've got European champions, world champions, current world champions planned in the coming days, coming weeks. We're gonna dive into all of the good stuff that we all want to hear. Preparation, mindset, setup, race craft, the whole lot. We're gonna ask the best questions and we're gonna get that information out to you, to me, and we're gonna all get faster together. So subscribe to the channel because you don't wanna miss the guests that we've got coming up and enjoy. And remember, subscribe down there or down there, but either way, it's down there. You don't wanna miss it. Okay, so Kevin Brunsden, welcome Hello. to uh, Shawnee RC, mate. You all right? So, just if you don't know Kev, then obviously you've been living under a rock because Kev's been just a massive part of racing for a good number of years now. Just to name a few of the accolades: forty plus BRCA, the British National Champion; thirty-five plus uh, Neo Buggy Champion twice; multiple, multiple BRCA Nitro A finals. Or Pretty much every final I've ever seen, every every national I've ever been to, I think you've been in the main. Um, multiple touring car national wins, eight times Southern Regional champion. So you've got the accolades, Kev. So welcome yeah, to the uh, welcome to the channel. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, actually, prepping my bike for this weekend. I'm having a weekend off from racing. Bike? Not prepping the N1. No, no, no. That's um, it's all stripped down, ready to get that um, done for Isle of Wight SRS. Ah, coming to my home next week then. I am, yeah, yeah. Looking forward ah, nice. to it. Awesome, awesome. So, Kev, welcome to the Ask a Pro series. So, this is just obviously a series, as I've just said, uh, introduction to the channel. We're going to be asking factory drivers, people like yourselves. We're going to be going over some mindset stuff, some practice stuff some race preparation stuff, just basically everything that people won't necessarily hear uh, from a from a factory pro, one of the upper drivers like yourselves. So okay. it's a good opportunity to just listen to something while they're wrenching, uh, just to try and get an idea behind the mindset behind the racing. So yeah, let's start. Go for it, yeah, let's go. <laughs> so I think one of the, uh, the biggest questions I've got, so selfishly this is also gonna improve my racing as well, so bear with. But let's just say we're practicing. Do you practice a lot? Or I know that you just turn up and you absolutely kill it, but do you, do you spend any time <laughs> practicing? I practice when I can. I don't get much time. Um, I've had more time recently. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I try and get out on Saturdays if I can. Um, but even when I'm there, I generally help other people. So I don't do much testing myself. Okay. I think that's really what I want to sort of initially go into is you practice where you can, you do a lot of help with the team and the Nemo team in particular, although you help everybody, which is really good. Yeah. Um, but you maintain your speed. Well, actually, you're getting what seems faster and faster every meet I see. I mean, you're always up there, you're always there or thereabouts, but certainly this year, I think your results have just taken another notch up. Um, so I want to try and get into into that really what you're doing you know I know that the N1's been released so yeah I just want to try and understand is, if it's not necessarily practice related how are you maintaining that that ultimate speed really like so yeah, yeah I mean I went to Italy last year um, as a, a bit of a one-off stand-in driver because one of our drivers fell off his motorbike and broke his arm um, okay. so I went to the RCGP um, so obviously I was racing Ongaro, Ronald Felt, Lee Martin, you know, you, you name it, they were there. Um, and it was a bit of a step up for me. Never competed against these guys before. 
Um, but I knew I was gaining a little bit in speed and confidence. So I went with no expectations, which um, was good. Um, and I, I'd managed to race them, um, which I hadn't really done before. And it gave me a huge boost in confidence. Um, I was actually supposed to retire from nationals this year. Um, it had all been agreed. No. Gonna, yeah, yeah. I was going to do more European races um and um retire from the nationals but obviously with the m1 coming um john took a decision that i wasn't going to retire yet um from the nationals um, on him. so i could be there to help all the juniors and help everyone with the m1 um so i went with a different mindset this year of having more fun um i've been going to the gym a little bit um sharpening up on my mind um, and out on my bike when I can. So um, that that's where I think things have changed for this year. I think that's a really, really good point. And that's the kind of the meat that I want to get into with this Ask a Pro series is ultimately what we do is is a mental sport. I mean, we, we move our fingers with the transmitter, but mental focus in your mind, I think, has such a big thing with this sport that we do. So I think that's a really good answer. I think if you go to a race happy and in a good place, mentally, physically, I think you're always going to have a better meet. And yeah, I mean, you won't drive well if, you, if your, your mind's not there. It, it, it's as simple as that. It's, um, you know, if you're thinking about other things, you, you can't race at the level that you want to be at with, with, you know, other things on your mind. No, I think that's a really, really good point. And um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. I think um, being physically fit, I mean, we're talking obviously about if you want to just go to the track and just have fun, awesome, go for it, no worries at all. I think yeah. this series I'm sort of focusing on people that are trying to push forward at any level. You could be in the F final to the D, the C, the A, or you could already be in the main. I think it's just about people that want to improve or, yeah, and like you say, it's a, it's a mental game, so... It's um, yeah. And that's really the main thing to remember is everyone's got to start somewhere. You know, yeah. we we weren't all straight into the A final. You know, it was you know you, you've got to work on it. Um, I say when I used to do touring car racing, um, you know, I was around about the C or D final, um, and then one day I went testing at my local track at Aldershot, and I met up with um, Dave Spashett and Chris Granger, who were yeah. world and European champions at the time. Yeah. Um, I was just driving around the track, and then Dave Spashett came over, um, spoke to me, um, and he was like, oh, you know, your car looks really good. Do you mind if I have a few laps with it? Well, he's current world champion. You're never going to say no. Um, no. He, he drove it round, um, done a few laps, made an adjustment to it. I went back out, couldn't tell any difference. Um, I went to the National the day after because in touring cars you could test right up until the day before um, and I went out and I finished third at that National and from that day I don't think I missed an A final So would you say then so as I say as a way to improve as a way to take that next step regardless of your current level is you need to put yourself out there, you need to attend the next step up in races you need to race the next level up so you can experience that level and then your kind of boundaries moves if you like um, yeah you, you you've got uh, i you know i disagree with this whole you know putting people in different classes because of their ability um the only way you can bring your ability forward is racing the the best people um okay. so yeah and i think and I think that's why in, in the uk we we have quite a good crop of drivers coming through because they're racing against the best all the time um yeah. so they they have to bring on their level um but you know and but talk to the, the top drivers as well at the track um you know we, we're there to help at the end of the day we're supported by our teams to help people yeah um, and if you know if they're not helping, they're doing something wrong. But then, and that's the way it's been my mentality: is you, you, we're provided something by our, our our distributors or manufacturers. You know, we're there to help you. So just come and ask, and we'll we'll give you that help. Yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent agree. So, yeah, and I think all of that adds into the what you're saying about the positive mental attitude. Um, 
if you're going to this race, you want to do well yourself, you're creating a positive environment around you, everybody else is happy, everyone else just wants to push forward. I think that, like you say, creates an environment which can only do good things for the brain. Certainly. Brains, you know, so. and, and having the people behind you at home, that, that makes a massive difference as well. You know, I, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without the support I get from home. Cool. So, mindset wise, I think I'm happy with that. I think good, happy environment. Push yourself to the next level because, like you say, it, it increases your kind of barrier. Yeah. Uh, your boundaries extend further. So, I really like that. So, what I'm just going to quickly get up on the screen then, just for like I say, anyone that doesn't know as or hasn't attended the national series in the UK. So, current standings for Kev. So, as we can see here, there's some some big names in here. This is the the British Nationals. This is um an extremely competitive league and uh yeah kev's comfortably sitting uh in fifth place at the moment so a top five kev so this is i just wanted to show this to really back up what you're saying and, and why you're here why you have the merit to be on the oscar pro series so obviously the season's going really well yeah i mean we dropped back a little bit after blackpool unfortunately we had a clutch bell fair and fail uh, in the final, um, I think about eight minutes or nine minutes from the end. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's going well this year. <laughs> yeah, no, it really, um, yeah, I think the results speak for itself. So we're definitely going to spend some time on the N1 later as well. Because yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's got to be talked about. It's certainly um, making so, some yeah. waves in the market. <laughs> so, yeah, we're definitely going to come on to that. Um, so mindset, we're going to the track and we're happy. Yeah. Let's talk about practice. So when you do practice, so I've got a scenario for you, which is I think a scenario which a lot of people find themselves in. So let's just say there's a, a club level driver or an upper sort of tier club level driver. They're practicing at the track when the tracks, obviously when it's not a race day. Let's just say you yourself are gonna go around that track, a fast lap being a 42 second lap dead. Yeah. This club driver, is going round at, let's say, 44 seconds a lap, and his fastest lap sort of a, a 43.9. So he's, he's, you know, he's in that sort of 43.9, 44 second lap dead. And going round and round and round, and that is his fast lap. How does someone, in your opinion, go to that next level? Not necessarily to the fastest level, but... Where can you then start gaining that half a second, that three quarters of a second, even a quarter of a second? How can you improve when you can consistently go around the track just at your pace? How do you get to that next step? So, first of all, I actually go and watch everyone else going round. Um, I, I spend a lot of time watching, you know, how others drive. Um, you know, like Elliot Boots, probably one of the, the most aggressive drivers out there. Um Johnny Skidmore and 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 you you take what they're they're doing you know they're they're the fastest lapping drivers out there at the moment um you you take what they're doing you try and watch try and learn you know how they're getting the car into the corner um I've got a bit of a different driving style to other people I, I try and carry corner speed um so I go into the corner a little bit slower and drive it out um, okay but, so let's just touch on that so your driving style. So if you're coming up to an apex or you're coming up to a, a corner, are you, you're on the power, you're off the power, so round the corner, mid exit, and then on the power or how are you going into your corner? So I tend to come off the power a little bit earlier um, okay. and then drive the car through the corner. So you're using the diffs and the, the grip to pull the car through the corner. Um, so that's so do you generally think you get what that from your touring car days. yeah from touring car driving yeah um so carrying corner speed so you put lo less load on everything um so you, you're effectively you're using less fuel um so that that's what i do um but it it's hard to find the next bit of lap time um you know it, it is sometimes it's just trying things you know can you go across this jump a little bit faster can you go a little bit faster into this corner don't be afraid to try it um you know, we're working with our juniors at the moment. Um, and when we go testing, we get them to drive absolutely flat out. Um, it doesn't matter if they crash, make a mistake. Uh, and then when we go to the race meeting, then we get them to, to, to rein that speed in a little bit um, okay. and then see what they can get away with. 
I like that. So, yeah, I think that's really good information. Do Would you recommend when it comes to practicing and set up you... Because I, I see a lot of people go into the track, practicing, making changes, making changes, trying to get speed that way. Or do you think it's a case of get the car working well-ish and just drive? If you if you can drive your car around the track, then there's not a great deal more you can do with it. Um, as long as you feel comfortable, um, it's then trying to extract more from the car from your own driving style, basically. Like I say, just putting it into a corner a little bit faster, hitting a jump a little bit quicker, you know, braking in a different position to what you're used to doing and, and moving the car around. I like that. Yeah, I like that because I think, I mean, test and setup, I love, I love it because even when you're not trying to get ultimately more speed out of the car, I think it's good to test things just so you know what it does because obviously changing conditions, it's good to know what locks in the back, not locks in the back. But I think when it comes to practicing, like you say, is get the car working and just get a feel for the car and find that time on the line or and that's it style. you know most of it will come from your driving um rather than from the actual car setup itself okay no, i like that that's that's good um cool okay so we've gone to the track happy we are practicing with a, a similar setup a setup that we know and we're just going to keep working on it from there. So I think that's, yeah, really good advice. And like I say, it's clearly working because you're sitting fifth overall out of 130. Yeah. And you're tussling with the guys at the top. So. Try yeah. my best. <laughs> no, awesome. So if we just touch on, I think we've got to talk about the N1. I think yeah. At this point, because let's just say we're practicing and we've gone to the track with the N1. Obviously, that's a. Do you think that's a big step, especially with your driving results? Do you think it plays a big part in it? Yeah, I mean, all the way through. Um, obviously, I helped develop the M1 pretty much from day day one, um, from when they they went with the prototype cars. Um, I hadn't actually driven it um, right up until I got a production car. <laughs> um, yeah. It, no, I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I didn't see you with because obviously it was very limited, wasn't it, with the. Uh, 3d printed cars so yeah so but i worked heavily with john i mean me and john done a lot of testing together um we went to west mill um you know at race meetings you know we worked a lot on that car um you know along with all the other guys we we um i think a lot of people thought it was just pros testing it it wasn't at all um we were giving it out to, to everyone to run uh, which was the reason why everyone was shocked that i hadn't actually used it um yeah and you know, our main focus was to make it so it was pre-set up from the box. You know, you didn't have to do anything to it. We got rid of all the adjustment um, to make it easy for people. Um, and that's that's where it, the, the car is a testament to itself. It's just really easy to drive, but fast. Yeah. And I think, like you say, with, the, with your driving style as well, I mean, don't get me wrong, it obviously suits for all driving styles, but... With that corner speed that I'd imagine that it carries, I mean, I've not had a go on one myself, um, but I'd imagine everything being so laid down, the centre of gravity is just slung all the way down. I'd imagine the corner speed that you can get out of the car is probably pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, it, it does everything that I like a car to do, um, but it, it seems to suit most driving styles that, you know, you can be aggressive with it. Um, the, our juniors are proven that. Um, yeah. And uh, but you can also be smooth and fast, and it it carries that as well. So it, it yeah, it's a good all round car. No, and I think it's a good point to touch on where we were talking about setup and practice because um, obviously the guys are doing extremely well with it, and they're all different driving styles. You know, Eric's very different to Ben. I think you know Ben's Eric can be super smooth. And I think Ben's like super smooth all the time. Um, yeah. And it obviously works for, for all the guys. So they've they've been absolutely killing it as well. So it's, it's good to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I was, I was just looking at the results from Euro B um, today. Um, yeah, I mean, the guys are flying with it. I think maybe Hugo's second overall at the moment, possibly. Um, yeah, so uh, after practice. So it seems to be going well. No, that's awesome. No, really cool. 
well done for your efforts and obviously John and Rumble and everybody that's played a part in it. So, yeah, can't obviously forgetting Lee. Lee's obviously been a big part of it as well. So, yes, certainly. Well done to you all. Well done to you all. Um, Thank you. So yeah, back to the back to the uh, the meat and bones or the the meat and potatoes, I think the saying is. <laughs> um, what well, let's talk about um, sort of race prep, race preparation. Certainly on the mental side, sort of, you know, if you're fighting for that bump spot in the semi final, if you're in the main finals fighting for a top three, a top five, do you find yourself being nervous? How do you calm those nerves, or do you, have you just been in it long enough now? You're just like focused. No, I still still get nervous. Um, I was talking to John Hazelwood about this the other day. Uh, you, you know what? The older we've got, I think the worse it is. Um, you start thinking about everything else. Um, you, you you start worrying about whatever cars are doing rather than your own. So that that's been the hardest bit is that that part of keeping what everyone else is doing out of your head and just concentrating on yourself. No, I think that's I I think that's where you kind of unlock that next level is how you control those nerves. I think um, I heard Elliot Boots once in a podcast and he said. Um, that you've just got to, when you're super nervous, you've just got to control those nerves and focus them into like just out and out pace. Just try and focus the nerves sort of down a down a tunnel, if you like, and performance on track. Just That's it. Yeah. Just on push track. yourself even harder so you start concentrating on you again rather than what everyone else is doing. No. That's, yeah, no, definitely, 100%. So I think just one other question as well, really, is, what I think a lot of people find themselves in, particularly people that might watch this that are looking to try and get that next step or just watching the background wrenching, whatever floats the boat. But yeah, we're having a good chat. So yeah, all good. Um, is obviously our national series is slightly different to around the world. Uh, I think the competition from overall qualification to from point sort of 20 just outside that semi down to 40 i think that particular area is one of the hardest fought upon um the people that are sort of qualifying into that upper quarters quarters into the semis like that that kind of area there i think is one of the biggest gaps personally to jump yeah um what would you say to a driver that's maybe qualifying 25th 26th 30th that's sort of just missing out on the semi spots top of the quarters qualifying that sort of level so i guess if you were at a raw um, event like a lot of the US the people that watch this channel will be it's kind of like yeah kind of like you're between your 20 and your sort of 30 positions or your kind of your B, C final so what would you say to those guys what do they need to do to take that jump from 25th to 30th just into the back of the semis kind of thing so just keep working at it um, you know there's no rush to get there um, it's it's always about just, you know, taking your time. And the main thing is having fun, trying to do it. I think as soon as you start putting yourself under masses of pressure, it's actually harder to get results. Um, yeah. You know, we all want to, like, we, you know, we all want to win. We all want to, you know, we all want to make the A final or, you know, or the semi finals. But, you know, sometimes you don't. And it, it, it's just a matter of keep, keep working towards your goal. Um, but, you know, if you start finding yourself not having fun, take a step back, reset, and then go at it again. Yeah, I, and I think that all comes down to the mindset. Like we were saying earlier with the mental approach, if you're going into a race and you're going to be disappointed if you don't make the semis, but you're actually a mid-quarter finals driver, you're not quite at that semi stage yet, and you're disappointed that you didn't make the semis or the main, I think you've got to look at yourself and go, right, where am I at as a driver? Yeah. Where, you know, where can I be? And um, like you say, have fun with it. Because the moment you start getting annoyed or angry that you've not made a semi when you're not quite there yet, I think you're going to lose heart and it's going to be disappointing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I can't remember what year it was. I mean, I, I can't remember how long I've been racing rallycross for at the time, but I think I was the only driver to make every national A final that year. Um, and I did it from the quarterfinals every time. Um, yeah. I, I wasn't making the, the semifinals, but having actual that extra bit of track time, doing the, the quarterfinals into the semifinals and then making the main, you know, it, that made a difference. So sometimes, you know, don't be disheartened because you haven't made a semifinal or a quarterfinal. 
you know, you can do the bump ups and sometimes that extra track time makes a huge difference. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point, to be fair. Don't look at it don't look at it as a disappointment, just look at it as a challenge. Yeah. 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 No, and I think, like you say, with that line, with that mental line, that boundary that you want to keep extending up, I think, um, yeah, I think that's a really good point because the more quarterfinals you make and win or come in your top four or your equivalent nationals calendar, you know, wherever you are, uh, series, the more quarterfinals you make, the more comfortable you're going to be at winning them or coming in that top four. And yeah, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, it's all practice at the end of the day. No, amazing. Amazing. So, Kev, where are you racing next? What's your... Because obviously you've been going international a lot recently, which is always awesome. Yeah. Um, where are you racing next? Where can we see you racing? Uh, uh, your local track. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, nice, nice. Yeah. We'll have so to go you're... out for dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dinner, definitely. Barbecue. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll meet you um, for definite. Um, so we're there from Friday night. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, Isle of Wight, and then I think we've got an e buggy truggy national at Nemo, um, and then in, back to nationals at East Shrewsbury, um, and then um, I think we've got another national at Nemo after that uh, for the rally cross, and then I think we've got the over 40s European Championships, which you've, yeah, no, awesome, which I, think I haven't done in. yet. Um, so, yeah. How old are you, Kev, if you don't mind me asking? Because obviously 45. I wasn't going to ask you your age. 45. See, for, 45 years old, which is not old by any means. No. You know, and your fifth overall in the national championship of a highly competitive series. Yeah, yeah. I think that's epic. And you're only getting faster, which is not just that. You know, that's just a, a stat you're looking at online. I mean, you are... You're there. You're like podium. You know, you're in that in that fight. You know, you're, yeah, dominating. It's awesome. Yeah. And you're you're getting faster and faster. And that's why I want to try and unlock some of that like mental mindset that you've got inside you. Try and put that out on a video to everybody else that maybe can harness it and unlock something from it because you're doing it and yeah, killing it. Yeah, I mean, I. Uh, you know what? I, I thought age was going to be a number. You know, I I I I, I believed when I when I was coming up through the <laughs> through the ranks of watching people race when they hit you know thirty five forty they always seemed to go backwards, um, and I didn't want that for myself. I wanted to keep keep on trying to to drive on and still you know try and win things. Yeah, yeah, no, and you're doing that, and I think a lot of that comes down to when people get to that kind of age, I think priorities change and they spend less time doing what they love or less time thinking about it. But if you still live it and breathe it and love it, I don't think it will slow you down for, for ages yet because you're in it. I mean, look at people no, like Adam no, Drake. There's no, and, and... Yeah. There's no reason why it should, you know, um, I'm, you know, I'm lucky. I had my kids when I was young, so, you know, they, they occasionally come racing, but other than that, you know, I, I don't, you know, they don't come to a racetrack. You know, I've got a partner that, that supports me as well um, at racing, comes along and, you know, gets on with everyone as well. So that makes yeah. a huge difference. No, awesome. And I think that's the the main point from this conversation that we've had on the, the Ask a Pro series is be happy, go to the track, have a positive mindset because ultimately this game that we all know and love is, is a mental game. I mean, yeah. if you've still got all of your fingers... You're physically, I mean, even people without fingers can still do this. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's a phys it's a it's, it's a small physical part to it, and it's all mindset. So if you go with the right mindset, you're going to get faster. And yeah. uh, love that. Definitely. No, awesome, Kev. I really want to thank you for your time for like I say this no Arsenal Pro series. Um, I think it's been great. I think each person that we get onto this is going to have a different kind of bullet points of information i think yours is a the positive mindset healthy um have a good team around you obviously nemo's is awesome the support is yeah second to sure. none really i mean i've seen what they've seen what they've been doing this year with the the tents and this the large setup sheets the whole lot it, i mean it looks it looks like it was you know yeah they've gone over a couple of years that. ago it's, yeah. it's epic 
I love seeing it. So and and I think that all plays a part in it. So yeah, I mean, if you want to say a thank you to any sponsors, Kev, I appreciate your time. Well, love you. Thank you to all my sponsors. It's easier to say that because I've got I've got quite a few and I don't want to miss any out. So um, yeah, no, I mean, thank you for all my sponsors as always. Um, I always go up and say thank you to them after every race meeting because um, without them I wouldn't be racing. So it's as simple as that. No, it's very expensive nowadays, and you know times are only getting tougher out there so any help that you can get is always appreciative yeah so. and we're always there to help everyone so come over and ask um you know yeah. i'm an open book if you if you want to ask a question you, you'll get the answer no that's that's awesome well i'm going to put uh, some links in the description to this video to the nemo yeah. racing website to the n1 um you run bullet engines as well now bullet engines You've always run bullets yeah so six it, tires fun. Ludicrous yeah. servos. Um, so we'll put a link. We'll pop a link to the, to those just to try and help those out. Obviously, they're helping you out. You're helping us out. You know that's yeah. that's what RC is all about. So, yeah, thank you for your time, Kev. No uh, we'll speak to you again. Yeah. See you later. See you later.